What's up everybody, Noah Lyles here, and today we're gonna be going over quite a few of my older races. Uh, we are lucky enough for NBC to send over some videos, so we got the top quality right here. And we're just gonna break down, tell some stories, uh, really just maybe give some form tips, maybe not, and just, you know, it's all vibes, all energy. 2019 World Championship Finals. This was kind of a roughish meet for me. I had already been in Europe for three months, which was the longest time period I'd ever been in Europe. Uh, I was really just trying to get through it. But the thing that kept me going was I knew that this was the year that I was supposed to win world championships. You know, in 2018, there was no, it was a down year, so no world championships. And in 2017, I got hurt, so I didn't get to go to that one. So this was the one that I was like, yeah, I'm going to win this. You know, there's nobody out here who can beat me. You know, this is my year. Uh, all right. Defending champ Guliev, who will be on the outside in lane tonight. Jamili is awesome on the turn. Yeah, by far the best intro I've ever had. Like, let's, let's go back. Let's go back 10 seconds. At 200 meters. The second fastest man in the field. Yeah, so a lot of people got to see better on TV. Like, the light show was way better on TV because they got to add, like, you know, the special effects that they were doing on TV. But actually on the track they were you know projecting all these like movable things and it was really cool and one of the coolest thing is they showed everybody's face you know on the track and when they did mine for a split second it turns to goku ultra instinct uh and that was because i was dying my hair um silver and i was like you know when i go to you know world champs that i'm gonna be ultra instinct goku so I thought that that was like just so cool and it played into everything that I was doing. And then I won, so that helped as well. <laughs> you know, you, you can't be doing all these antics and not win. You know, that's kind of weird. That's the defending champ, Guliev, who will be on the outside in lane nine. So tonight, Jamili is awesome on the turn. Ah, the Goku scream. You got to do it. If, if you're not powering up into your Super Saiyan form right before the race, what are you doing? young man i want you to think about look at the power and the physique and this was a kid who missed school who missed so much time lying in a hospital bed suffering from severe it's okay nobody 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 likes school <laughs> and look at what he's turned himself into and remember he skipped the hundred at the u.s nationals because he said he wanted to focus only on the 200 this year he says he will double yeah a lot of people thought that i was going to go for the double in 2019 and while it was a thought it was never really um something that me and my coach actually committed to uh, one there were just a lot of people in the hundred that i felt were just better than me at the time and two i really wanted a gold medal and i felt that going after the double would have hurt my chances more and I would have been tired by the time we got to the you know, my sixth race if I ran the all the three rounds of the 100 and then all three rounds of the 200 and then try to do a relay on my first world championships. I just wasn't comfortable taking a risk like that. So, you know, everybody was like, oh, yeah, he's going to do the double. He's going to do the double. It was never really a thought to me and my coach if we were going to do it. Next year at the Olympic trials and hopefully then at the Olympic Games. Two of the best finishers in the field. But you have to put yourself close at 100 so you can summon that finish. This is Noah Lyles' first time at a world championship. He's in all blue in lane five. Yeah, again, not my best start, but uh, it, it was right here when I knew that I won the race. Like, I know what people have to do to pull away from me. And if you haven't pulled, put like 20 meters on me, maybe even 30 meters on me, you're not going to win, especially not in the 200, definitely not in the 200. So I knew as soon as we came off this turn that I would catch everybody and then I would just start trying to pull away from there. Lyles has some work to do. He will not be the first off the turn. Lyles has raced all these guys in Diamond League, but now he hits top gear. Noah Lyles, U.S. champion, world champion. Yeah, I, I I know it's crazy to say this, but I just remember so being like it 
drained after this race. Like I wasn't excited. I wasn't like really into it. I was just drained and exhausted. And I, every time I look back at like this race, I couldn't have, I didn't watch this race for another like six months because it didn't like in my head, I was like, oh, I'm supposed to be faster. You know, I'd run 19.5 that year. It's like, I wanted it to be better than that. I wanted to be excited. I wanted to go out there and scream and yell. I wanted it to be how Eugene was. And it just wasn't for me. And now that I look back, I'm like, it couldn't have been because of all the things that was just happening at the time. But I like it more now because I went through the hard times in the, my first world championships. And that right there was like, okay, I know what it takes to be a champion. And I'm going to bring that with the rest of my career. And the great thing was I still actually became a world champion and nobody can take that from you unless you're doping. Don't, don't, don't do drugs, kids. This is Brussels Diamond League Final 2019. Um, this is, I believe, my second time going for the Diamond League tr trophy. And uh, <laughs> crazy story. I actually had to use the bathroom so bad in this race. No lie. I ran with, 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 a, little, with a little turtle poking out. It, it was it was a it was a it was it was a rough race. You know, all I was really thinking about was winning and making sure I didn't mess up my pants. <laughs> so as soon as I'm done running, I literally dart off past media, past the interviewers, and straight to the bathroom. All while running, I gotta use the bathroom. <laughs> It was it was it was a wild race. It was really a wild race. So it, my first intentions going into this race, I wanted to run 19.6, 19.5. After I got on the line and they said on your mark, I was just hoping not to embarrass myself. But let's see what happens. That he's trying to go under 19.50. He's in lane seven. That's a lane he chose. Third from the outside. Men's 200 meter final as it begins to rain here in Belgium. All right, having a decent start. Andre's kind of coming up on me a little bit. But this right here is where I do all my best work off the turn. Yeah, that was a, I came off the turn really well. This is this is exactly where I was just trying not to poop my pants. And will take another Diamond League title at 200 meters 1974. Very good time, but that's as close as anybody has been with Noah Lyles. Eugene, 2021. This was right after the Olympics. This is my last race of the season, and it was my only race after the Olympics. I was it like I was not planning to go to this race. I was, you know, very depressed, especially after getting third at the Olympics, and I was just like, no, I was supposed to win, yada yada yada. You know, I'm just gonna like not show up for the rest of the year and come back. And then everybody was like, no, you need to run. You need to run. Like, you're going up against the same people. You need to show everybody that, and you show yourself, like, you know, this isn't it. Just because you have one bad year doesn't mean that you have to finish with a bad time. And I was like, you know what? You're right. So I went out there and, um, <laughs> you know, we decided that we were just going to hunt. You know, we were we were stalking people. We were like, all right, y'all think that I'm out? Y'all think that I'm down for the count? Y'all think that I can't do nothing no more? That 95 was a fluke? Nah. Let's let's get it. Let's run it back. Let's run it back. Potentially in Tokyo, the hundred didn't go his way. <laughs> so my girlfriend believes that anytime that I shoot off the gun as an intro, that I'm gonna do damage. Um, the first time I did that, I believe, I think it was Shanghai. Yeah, I think it was Shanghai 2019, and I ran 90 to 6, and I did it again at, where did I did it? I did it at Lausanne 2019, uh, yeah, 2019, when I ran uh, 1950, and then this was the third time that I did it. So anytime that I shoot the gun, you know, I'm shooting off bangers, you know, it's going to be a good race. Oh man, look at that uniform. So Adidas actually specially designed this uniform for me. So off 2021, the Adidas campaign was this Noah anime. And you can still go on my social media and find it. It's in my reels. Um, I think I have it on Twitter as well. But if you you know type in Noah Lyles anime, it'll come up. And it was like this huge commercial based off of just like running and 
you know, being this, this superstar or this coming up superstar in this, you know, track world. And it's, it's really cool. You got to go see it. But the city that we're running in is called Go City. And it was kind of like based off of Tokyo softly. And they put the whole city on the back of my jersey. And that's what this jersey is. And now I got it hanging up. Uh, I love the jersey. It's it's really cool. And that's when I was like, yo, you know, I'm doing something for, you know, for my anime brothers and sisters out there. So, Josius was actually in this race as well. So, this was a pretty fun race. And I he, I remember him saying, bruh, if you win, you got to do the Naruto run afterwards. Uh, yeah, I forgot. We did somebody. I don't even think they had a false start. I think it was just an issue with the clock. So, this is when I knew that I can have good starts. In this race, yeah, I was just clear having everybody. I knew I was flying. Yep, and there's the Naruto run. <laughs> yeah, I, I was so happy that I ran that race because I knew once I ran it that the next year was going to be immaculate. Because I started off with a 19.5, or I left with a 19.5, so I knew that my training was working. We just judged it wrong, you know. We were just one week off of when I was supposed to peak. But I knew that going into the next season, I had something big to work off of. All right, Lazan, 2022. Uh, shoot, this was a race that I really wanted to try and, like, go for that. PR after um, after Eugene. I really wanted to run sub-1931. The only thing was, to be honest, I don't think that Lazan's track is really made for 200 runners. A lot of people believe it. I think that the, the connection between the turn and the straight is too tight. Um, so it kind of makes it difficult for me to run. And a lot of the fastest 200 times are run you know, in those top two or those last two lanes, it's like um, lane eight, lane seven and lane six. Those are usually where the fastest lanes are. And that's why I always choose seven when I go there. I usually choose seven all the time, but sometimes I'll choose six or five just because, you know, I like to mix it up sometimes. And it's all based off, you know, how I feel. But you now this race was just to get out there, have some fun. We were done with worlds. Nothing really mattered anymore. So it was all up to what I wanted to do in you. And to be honest, all I wanted to do was race fast people. So I heard a rumor that Knighton took eight because he heard I took seven. I don't know if that's true, but, you know, <laughs> we'll see. Watch the American record holder Noah Lyles in the men's 200 meters. So... A lot of people watch this race and say that I had a bad start. I did not have a bad start. Michael Norman just had a better start. When I got the results back from this race, my first 100 time was 10.16, which was the exact same time that I ran when I won at Worlds. Michael Norman's first 100 time was 10.09. So yeah, I just wasn't faster than him in the first hundred. So, no, I didn't have a bad start. He just had a really good one. Yeah, a lot of people will ask me, like, how do you finish races and all this jazz? The thing is, I'm not finishing races. I just hold my form very well. You know, I'm not finishing f so much faster well, I kind of am now, <laughs> but when I was running my normal times, like my, well, when I was running my 1906s and 1907s, I was just finishing stronger than everybody. I had good top end, great mechanics, and I just held it longer than others. And I paced my races very well. So you saw how Mike got out, you know, yeah, 1009 is very fast, but if you don't have the fitness to be able to hold that energy or if it takes too much energy out of you by the time you get to the straightaway 
you don't have anything left to give. And that's truthfully what I think happened in, you know, kind of this race. Yeah, uh, after that race, I did an interview and somebody was like, oh, 19.5, that's kind of disappointing. I took offense to that. 19.5 is never going to be disappointing. If you run 19.5 and somebody says that to you, they in the wrong profession. They don't know what they talk about. Who's going to get that medal in the middle? All right. Men's 200 World Championships 2022. Right now, this is what everybody calls my magnum opus. I just call it, you know, another great race because I got more to come. But it was a very fun race. You know, I remember walking out onto the track after the women's had just gone out and they were celebrating the women. And then all of a sudden they see the men come out and they just instantly start going crazy. You know, the crowd was just so hype. And this is the, this is the fullest stadium I'd ever been in. You know, I've been in bigger stadiums, but none of them were packed out like this was. Uh, usually they were like half empty or sometimes the crowd was there in different parts of the day and they would never stay for the 200. But this, you could tell that everybody was here to see the 200 meters and it was electrifying in there. Like everybody was excited. I had people screaming and yelling, calling out our names. And as we were just walking to the blocks, like we were ready. In any event. And here he is, my favorite. Again, you got to charge the spirit bomb. Every time I prepare to run a big race, I'll call for a spirit bomb. And then you got to go Super Saiyan. It was at this moment I knew I had won this race. The world final on the line in the 200 meters. And Nike is making up ground. So right here, I was like listening out for anything and anybody. I was like, okay, do I hear footsteps? Do I hear, you know, people's breathing? Do I hear arm swing? I'm not hearing anything. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm alone. I'm at the top of the turn. I've left everybody. I'm alone. This is crazy. I I usually am not in this position. And then I said, all right, I want more. But Noah Lyles has run another great turn. And if he has the lead, you got to like his chances. Look at the way that Noah Lyles came into the home straight. Now Arian Knight's trying to catch I kid you not, I've never been in a race where I felt like I couldn't finish it. At this point in the race, I felt like my back had broke from how badly I was bending it and arching it. I was like, this has to be the worst form I've ever produced. And now when I watch it, it's like, oh, it's actually not that bad. So maybe that goes to say that, you know, things are worse in my head than they are in actual in actuality. But, you know, th this was definitely the race that I was like, oh my gosh, this ain't it. I'm not going to finish this. I'm not going to make it to the line. They go catch me. <laughs> I wasn't surprised at the time. What I was surprised at was that Michael John that me and Michael Johnson's time were tied. Like there's a there's ten numbers in, you know, nineteen thirty. And you chose nineteen thirty two, like that specific one. So I was just like, there's no way. But uh it, it was uh it was a perfect scenario for what happened. And uh you know, the rest is history.